All right. So, welcome to this week's ep- episode of The Initiative. The Initiative. Featuring Danny Cola. What's up, bro? How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. Good. So, I'm, I'm, I'm doing podcasts every Wednesday now. Every Wednesday, it's like a... Like you're recording them and releasing them, or that no, you, that's like, your day to record like them? Like, that's my day to put them out. Oh, you're so you I gotta get on one. Wednesday. I gotta get one between Wednesdays and then put it out. We are like episode 12 now, right? This is 13. 13? Yeah. So you're 17 more episodes, and then you can come on my podcast. Yeah. Shit, yeah. Right? It's I told you 30 episodes. Yeah, you did. You've been fucking hard working on that. You've been working hard on a lot of things. Yeah, I have. It's what good. Have, you've been working hard. On a lot of things. What's, I've been hardly working, bro. What's going on with you? What's... <laughs> a lot. I mean, I'm at this point where I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. And it is the best thing ever. Because okay. now I could like, actually manifest dreams into reality. Especially when I don't know what the future holds. What does that mean? Because a lot of people are going to hear that and think you sound cheesy. That's so, like, how do you, well, how first do you combat of all, that stigma? First of all, I... I'm at this point where I just really don't give a fuck how other people think. Well, that's a, it's a battle, right? I constantly battle that because I care in a sense that I want to give off an inspirational, positive message. Yeah. But at the same time, I don't care what people's opinions are. Right. Like, people's opinions can go, and that's none of my business, actually. Other people's opinions can go ahead and, you know, take a walk. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. But uh, what it means is that I am... I don't have a set schedule about what things I want to unfold, to unfold when. Like, I'm trying to detach myself from that. All I'm trying to do is do work every day that's aligned with my heart and a clear message, which has a lot to do with wellness and checking the boxes, nutrition, movement, sleeping, reflection, thinking, breathing. So you're promoting that message. Yeah. That's kind of your mission. It's a heart... It's a heart brain coherence that I'm just working with. What does that mean? Like heart brain coherence. My 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 heart is set on sending this message, mm-hmm. right? This holistic wellness approach. And like I have this initiative, I have this want, this will exactly, yeah. to go ahead and just do this because it's in my it's in my soul. That's that's really what the initiative is about is hearing about that. What, what made you start going on the journey that you're on? What, what do you feel that the initiative is for you? All that stuff. Well, I always, when I, when I was your age, and I was 18, 19, and I was thinking about what I wanted to do with my life, like, I never thought of myself working in an office, ever. Clearly, when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I, uh, you know, my dad was in the restaurant business. And, really? Yeah. That's like, funny. he was, you know, he, he cooks food, and, and he was he was uh, he had a, a carry out place and cool. he um, he delivered fish wholesale. <laughs> so <laughs> I I envisioned myself as a restaurant owner, but then I realized shit I don't cook I don't I don't particularly like cooking. My dad puts his love into his food, which is why it's amazing. My mom does the same thing. She's not a cook by any stretch, but my dad always like put love into his food, which is why it was so always so good. Yeah. Like, a lot of love and camaraderie and family came out of the times when we were sitting at the dinner table, Yeah, you know? Yeah. And I learned a lot from those times. And initially, like, it started this, like, I, it, came, it came from a loving place, and it was just, you know, how it fueled me, really. But I always visioned myself, envisioned myself as a restaurant owner for some reason, or a, a, a bread delivery man, or delivering some sort of food, because that's what my dad did. So what, when did that change? when I realized that I wasn't a chef. So my dad had a carry out fish business and I was, uh, you know, I was working there. Frying food, grilling fish, dealing with customers and, and you know, with money and, and you know, hospitality, customer service, yeah. learning all that shit. And then I was like, this is, like, I didn't even have to say to myself, this wasn't the life, I just knew. It wasn't the life that I wanted. Like, it's not my thing. Yeah. That's not my thing. You weren't, I, you weren't excited by it? I wasn't excited by it. I was excited to go to work because there was this girl that worked there that I fucking loved. Like, one of my first crushes. When really? I was, when I was 15, 16, and she was two years older than me. Good way to motivate a guy. Yeah, For right? For sure. For sure. Yeah. And, like, I learned a lot just working with her, too. You know, like, about personality, about chemistry, about, yeah. you know, working together with somebody else. And, 
you know, having feelings like that, because that happens with normal people. Like, you go to work and you work with a lot of different people, and sometimes you develop feelings, sometimes they're more corporate and like vanilla and work relationships, but sometimes, like, People have relationships with other people at work because you just spend so much time with them. Yeah. And I was a young, you know, I was a young man. I was a sophomore, freshman, sophomore, junior in high school. And, you know, I was just coming into myself and learning about yeah. that shit. But all, I automatically knew right away it wasn't my... It wasn't my calling to be a okay. to be a restaurant owner or a chef or a delivery man. Like, my clear um, skill sets were teaching, were coaching, and once I started to learn a lot about the body and how to exercise and coach people through those things, like I just built my skills upon that. And then I just started teaching and coaching in a lot of different avenues, whether it would be training in a gym, teaching in a classroom, coaching on a field, doing one-on-ones, doing group sessions, doing big group sessions, uh, and then later the podcast and you know, just figuring out different ways to teach that came natural. And this whole wellness has been, this wellness approach, this information that I've learned, that I've been learning has just been evolving. And I love it. And now I'm at this point where I have major global goals, right? Like I want to create a workshop that's global. I want to have clientele. I want to build a, a personal wellness brand and collaborate with other people in the industry. But I have no like outcomes to it all. I just want to let my heart guide and yeah. trust in the unknown and fucking do my thing, man. Like it's it's fun. Like I have an un- unlimited, infinite amount of summertime. That's how I feel about the gap year. It's just like an extended summer. Yeah. But uh, yeah, like even yesterday you were saying in reality, like it might it might just be like seven gap years. It might be like seven years. Like initially, like you're putting all this time and, and love and effort into what you're doing that like watch Why would your, I halt that? You know? Watch your, I mean, look, if you could always go back to school, yeah. it's never going anywhere, yeah. right? Yeah. I went back, I took two and a half year gap year. You know what I mean? Yeah. But then I went back because I, I saw another opportunity to coach and teach and play college football and I needed certifications and a degree to do that. Okay. You know what I mean? Like I felt that that was the path so that I wanted. The path you needed to take required college education. Yeah. That's kind of how I, yeah. I'm gonna let this unfold. If I feel like there's a point where I need to get cert, like get a degree to, to continue, then I'll do that. But it's not something I feel like a, it's like a box that I have to check off in order At to the moment. pursue the rest of my life with. Sure. You know? Sure. And that whole like, what do I need to do to pursue the rest of my life is a crazy, crazy thing right. to say because we don't fucking know. You know, it's funny because like. I, I say I'm taking a gap year, but I really only have like the next four months really thought out, you know, like really envision kind of more detailed. After this event that I'm trying to throw to premiere my documentary, the only plan I have is to plan the next documentary. Yeah. Which is like very vague and yeah. not specific. Well, also like I'm very, very, uh, impressed with your overarching goal that's bigger than you that's bigger than your documentaries which I don't is, even talk about that you don't yet. talk about that yeah is that secret should I not kind talk of, about that yeah okay well, well like let's just, just, to, I, just to piggyback off that make that make more sense I part I have like an idea for a startup not a startup a charity that I would like to start a nonprofit a nonprofit charity like that empowers young people that that, that has an people. impact yeah. that has a bigger impact yeah. than yourself yeah but that's like neither that's like really like five years from now but my point is yeah. to even have those thoughts is amazing within itself right like everything that we do we talk about the initiative so that we can take our lives to the next level or have a life that we want that's passionate but what do we do it for like we selfishly do it for ourselves yeah but hopefully the work that we're doing has a bigger impact on another yeah. scale and that's well, that's the thoughts that you have which I, is yeah it's pretty amazing something i've realized and i don't know if i heard this somewhere or i just kind of theorized it into a thought myself but um if 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 your goals are to only make yourself better and at the expense of other people's well-being, you're actually going to make yourself worse off because the more people that are successful, the more successful you'll be just 
in general. Totally. It's just a, that's kind of like a law. Like if I'm the only rich person, then no one like this is just a very minute example. But if I'm the only rich person on earth, and rich can mean a lot of different things. Sure. Yeah. Well, rich let's say I'm rich. I'm the only person who's rich in love. I have so much love for everyone, but nobody else has it. Then if, how am I going to get any in return? But if you have love for everybody, then you're putting it out. You're rich in love. If you're rich in love, then that love goes outward. It's like yeah, but if, like if if you're if you mean like you're you're selfish. Kind of if, you're, if you're selfishly rich, yeah, that's it. If yes. you're selfishly yes. rich and everything is going yeah. to you, then how the hell does everybody else? Uh, how does everybody else benefit from that? Exactly. You know, there's no what and what's the point of it? What's the point of it? Why all? would you want to? Why would you want to have, quote unquote, success without your people being successful with you? Yeah. And even yeah. not your people. It's just like, why would you want to do it to not make other people's lives better? Like, I don't see what the point of that is. Yeah. Well, to not a... have people around you that are as happy as you. Sure. You know. Sure. Because that would just in. It just make you less happy. Well, a lot of people have selfish inclinations, a lot, and these are just observations, right? This is nobody in particular, but people have selfish yeah. inspirations and and power. They want power, and, and what I've realized is that a lot of those people they have trauma from earlier in their life that makes them have this world viewpoint where I need power, I need control, I need money, I need success. Yeah, it all it all stems from some insecurity. Some so, something. I some think sort of I, I've been for the past few years I like there was like a time a few years ago like there was an incident that made me like kind of sad for a while and from that I learned a lot of things about insecurity and how much negative stuff on this earth dwells from insecurity, you know? Fear. Like it's it's yeah, just fear and insecurity are, in my mind, kind of the same thing. But, like, in insecurity causes so much selfishness and self-righteousness and mm -hmm. negative mm -hmm. things to other people. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't even know what the point of it is, but of this little tangent. But, like, yeah, that's something I realized. Like, most negative things come from insecurity. Definitely, man. And, like, negative actions. We just, we're just, look, it's basically a, uh, we're in survival mode. Right, we are in survival mode at that point because yeah. we're afraid of failure. Mm -hmm. We're afraid of a lot. Because we, yeah, well, it's literally survival mode because you probably trace it back to like thousands and thousands of years ago when we were literally had to survive. But like, we can listen, people. Man. People when they were insecure, it meant they might die. Yeah. They might be cast out yeah. and dead. Yeah, you know. And these are like we, they even talk about like genes passing from generation to generation. Like, why do you think kids are afraid of monsters? Because they were because people thousands of years ago were afraid of wild dogs or or animals just going to eat them. Like yeah. wild animals, yeah. bears, you know, tigers, yeah. Yeah. whatever the fuck that they were born into. You know, like. But this, our, our lineage comes from a, a lot of different places. You've you've talked about because there's like a lot of new science coming out and like they even taught this at my school last year to some people, but like called epigenetics uh -huh. and like how gene genetics we only use a certain amount of our genetics and the rest are like very variable and you can change your genetics and almost change your outcome. Dude, this, this is something you talk about with yeah, me. Yeah. Not you don't talk to me about it a lot, but like it's you talk about shaping your future mm -hmm. and shaping like and being in control of all these things and you've put me on to podcasts where they talk about um, the epigenetics and, and literally changing your genome. Yeah. God, yeah. putting yourself in a different mindset and meditation yeah. and all that. So like that's what you talk about. Talk a little bit about that and like what you're, how you feel like that is so important with like being successful. Just being, just working and living out of love, man. Like that's ultimately how we end up getting out of survival mode yeah. into creation mode. Okay. So talk, so like you say work, creation mode to me is w when you say working out of love, those are the same things, right? Yeah. So like. But that might sound like hippie stuff to some people. So what? Talk about what creating out of love is, and like the brain love connection. Like what? How can you dumb that down so everyone can kind of understand what you're saying? Well, we all have these feelings that make us giggity, happy, right? Yeah. It's like you go to school, at high school. You don't particularly like. There's a there's a there's a vibe that a lot of kids have. That's like I go to school and I just have to. 
and I hate it. And it's Monday. My personal. A lot, a lot, yeah, yeah. a lot. From my experience, a lot. And I, I, that was me too. Like I'd wake up and be like, why don't I? Why am I doing this shit? And then we condition ourselves to keep wanting to have that feeling subconsciously, like that's what we're programmed to do. Like we wake up, we go, we don't te technically want to do this, but we have to because it's what we're supposed to do, quote unquote, mm -hmm. right? But then you wake up on Saturday and it's like, oh, well, what do I get? I get to play soccer today. I get to go out with my friends. We're gonna do, we're gonna go hang out at the pool. We're going to build this or create that or do a podcast. Like everyone's got their own unique way of feeling happy and lovey and expressing themselves yeah. in this unique way, yeah. right? We need to condition ourselves to figure out a way to make those feelings fund our existence in this reality. Like a, our society is based on capitalism. We have to figure out a way to fund yeah, our existence. I love that little, make those feelings fund your existence. Yeah. And yeah, I love that. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. we, have to, we have to figure out a way to do that because there is a way. Like you talked about junk yeah. DNA. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Right, you know? right. But you talked about our epigenetics and how we have this junk DNA. Like, we have the ability. We don't. It's not just junk DNA. It's not just Epi junk DNA. Meaning like the, the genetics that are up for variation. Yes. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Like the ones we're not using. The ones we're not using. Yeah. And, and 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 science, and and biology and life. We don't keep things around for no reason. Yeah. We usually have a have a way to evolve away from something we don't use. Yeah. But we have all this DNA that's up for variation and change. We have the power to manipulate that and change that to what we essentially want. And the only way we can do that is by going back to those feelings of love, appreciation, yeah. gratitude, thankfulness, passion, joy, Dude, you know what's inspiration. A perfect example of that? What? Losing weight. Because when you put yourself in a different physical state, meaning your metabolism is changing and your body has to start using fats for energy mm -hmm. and it starts changing the genome to create different chemicals in your body that break fat down and turn it yep. into energy. Yep. But that doesn't happen. You don't lose weight. I mean, you can in, with a negative mindset, but that doesn't actually end up being healthy for you. If you want to lose weight in a healthy manner, you have to have a positive, it has to come from a positive state of mind where you're looking forward to the future and being happy with the process and not hating yourself and yeah. your, your past, you're like, it's all coming from a place of love. Yeah, the most, being That's present. where the successful stories come from. Being present. Yeah. Totally, Being yeah. present. We can't, we can't like, I mean, we, we, it, like, a lot of these, these conversations come back full circle. Like, we can't attach ourselves to the outcome of being 30 pounds less, right? We have to love each moment right. so that you don't even think about it. But if you think about, yeah, because if, you, if you're so focused on the number goal, it's on it's an unhappy process because mm -hmm. you're never there until you reach that yeah. and then you're like then oh, i just there. wasted three months being so focused on today and it th i didn't feel better yet today than i do yesterday you know it's like yesterday equals tomorrow if there's no crazy like mindset towards that like yesterday is the same as tomorrow unless you make those changes and enjoy the present now because that's what it is it's just an eternal now constantly yeah time is it's, it's an eternal yeah. now like we always talk about or I, you always hear that time is just an, a man-made illusion yeah it's not a, an actual real thing and that's it's kind of, abstract yeah we want it to be concrete because we perceive time as in this linear monday through friday bust my hump all day and then i can't wait to this vacation this time this weekend this next break like we're constantly feeling that we know what's going to happen in our future but yesterday always equals tomorrow if there's no different perception so break that down a little more here i like yeah break that down a little more why why is yesterday tomorrow if we don't change today if everything's a present moment then we're just going to be conditioned to go back to how we viewed things yesterday, yeah. which ultimately makes our tomorrow. We're going to bring yesterday into today and yeah. tomorrow. We're going to predict what happened yesterday into tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. Without making different changes, without making changes to the, the our conditioning. Yeah. Right? That's the thing. We have to constantly, not constantly, but just bring up those feelings that we're going back to love. We're getting too, too, too off, off topic Definitely, here. Like, yeah. We're going back to like those feelings of like of love, right? Gratitude, joy, passion, happiness. 
you have to condition yourself to think those feelings and think about your future as if it already has happened. Because we have no way of understanding if it really happened or if it didn't happen. We're just conditioning our brain to think that it's happened. Like you said, I'm connected to Thuzi. I'm connect. I feel like it's already happened. Thuzi, I don't even talk about either. Uh, you know, you're connected to your crazy, your big endeavors. You yeah. said multiple times it feels like it's already happening. Yeah. Right. We don't know if it actually has happened or not. But we're conditioning ourselves to yeah. believe, yeah. right? So we're, here's, here's, we're changing that right, junk DNA right. into so something. Like, when I felt the the like real strong pull emotionally to not going to school this year, like there was a moment in time where I, f- I just felt it that I shouldn't. It wasn't the right move. Too many bad things were happening with the school I was about to go to, and I was just like, I felt like I was like, fuck this, I'm not doing this. I'm doing what I really want to do. It yeah, wasn't it was never in my heart. I always felt pressured to do it. But anyway, so it's big to realize yeah, that awareness. Yeah, thing. huge. And uh, huge. just if I had decided to ignore that feeling and go back to school, then I'm putting the past patterns and lifestyle that I'm used to, which has been going to school for 12 years, into the future. I'm not really addressing that in the present and changing Past yesterday equals tomorrow. Exactly. Exactly. And then just. I, I, I feel those emotions because I feel like all the stuff that I want to happen is happening and has already happened. I can't explain, you can't, you can't convince people of that stuff, but like, like the big film production company I want to have and the media production company I want to have and the charity I just talked about wanting to start and all of them thriving and my, I have a team and they're all happy and my family and all that. It's already happened. Like it's happening. I'm putting in this. I'm put. I'm laying down the puzzle for it to happen, and it's it's happening because of that. I can't. It's all in tandem, you know. Yeah, dude. You're you're gonna see in the next like 20, 30 years, the science is gonna be coming out and talking about how everything's like. I every, already, dude, everything's connected. I already see, like, just just from learning from you, because you're a very spiritual guy. You're very into meditation you've taught me a lot about meditation yeah, that's it. I it's such, it's Medi- such a game because game. Medi- we're talking about being present is the key right but it's, meditation teaches you how to be present it's literally a, it's like a drill it's like in basketball when you take free throws you get better at free throws well meditation makes you better at being present it's the same thing because you're redirecting your thought exactly. patterns so that's all that meditation is it's redirecting your thought yeah to something that's inside so so explain how like you're the blueprint for basic meditation so we all have thoughts that are racing yeah constantly our thoughts are consciousness right. our thoughts well we don't really know well, what our thoughts the, are the mind talk like the mind is meant to have thoughts yeah we're, we're we take thoughts and then eventually we take those thoughts and make them concrete ideas and they they end up being this yeah, bench and you get attached to them well I mean, look, not so much being attached. Not, to that. not this, not this. But, but I, all I'm saying you, is that you have a thought and you just decide that's that's what you're going to make reality, and you become attached to that. Like sure. you were saying, getting attached to outcomes, but that's another tangent. Sure, but like we have conscious thoughts. Yeah. They're ideas. Yeah. We capture those ideas, and it basically unfolds. What's up with your neck? You all right? Yeah. <laughs> that's funny. I think so. Take a break here. We'll go we'll back to the meditation, but. When I podcast, especially with somebody on film sometimes when I'm not like super comfortable, I I have these little tidbits where I'm Yeah. Oh, and I say things like, you know a lot, you know, you know. Anyway, I just fall uh, back. That's funny, I keep going, yeah. I, I just talk. fall back to these patterns. And like I noticed that when we were sitting here talking for however long it's been, like you cracked your neck multiple times. Fucking stop that. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> It's just these things that we go back to that are subconscious, that are uh, their habits. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Anyway, going back to the meditation, we have these conscious thoughts that turn into ideas. You cra- you grasp the idea, and the idea turns into matter. It's concrete. We exactly. make we make it concrete. Yeah. Like it shapes. Our minds have the power. Yeah. To do that. We do. It's why we're in this world that we're in today, where we have cameras and we're able to have computers and TVs and airplanes and get into this technological advancement society that we have, right? Yeah. But 
we condition ourselves to live the life that we think we're supposed to be living based on our environment, our family, a lot of shit. Yeah. Right? So basic meditation, we have to take the energy from within that we're giving out constantly. School, business, ideas, thoughts, that tree, mom and dad, you name it. Food, exercise, the stuff, appointments that we have. We're, our energy is out in so many different ways. Because yeah, we have to cut that energy out and bring it back to within, right? And that's what meditation is. It's realizing that our brain has gone astray. Our thought processes are on all these other things. And where you place your thought is where you place your energy. So where you place your attention is yeah. where you place your energy. Remember that. Right. Where so, you place your attention is where you place your energy. So. Instead of placing our attention on all these different things, we need to stop it and bring it back to our breathing. So you start focusing on your breathing. Mm -hmm. You take, what, 10, 20 minutes? Start with one. You start breathing. I, I started with five. That was my, because I have an app that does like five minute increments. Oak. Oak. Oak is a great app. Good, good. Um, great app. Got me started on meditation. Yeah, so, how long have you been meditating? Uh, November 2017, I started. And uh, I've been doing it since then. Yeah. So like, how's your life changed since then? Oh man, um, a lot. Like I just have this, I have this. I just want to keep understanding shit that people turn a blind eye to. Like why? Oh God, yeah. Like why do we ignore the fact that people are so sick today? Because they're on this. They're on this uh, linear path of I need to wake up, go to work, and do these things to make money for my family. And why? Why? Why are we doing these things that we don't want? Why are we doing the and and the the heart heart disease problems, mental mental issues, obesity. Uh, we have all these problems today. People are sick, and we don't. We don't understand and we don't address the fact that it's all coming from chronic stress that we put ourselves under. Your life is a reflection of your inside, right? Everything that's manifesting in your current reality is coming from within. And I'm realizing that we're afraid to look within. That's okay. You can walk away when I'm trying to have this conversation with you. I gotta keep this going. Keep on. Keep okay, so when I meditate, I've learned to think bigger. God bless you. Thanks. I've learned to uh, become more present, obviously, but I've learned to become more parasympathetic, which is more relaxed and rested. God bless you. Jesus. I'm going to sneeze that 10 more times for me. Why? Allergies, dude. Allergies? Yeah. So again, our reality is a reflection of what is happening inward. So meditation has just helped me understand those things. And I, uh, I ask these bigger questions. I get deeper into wellness. I'm trying to understand what causes chronic stress. And we cause ourselves chronic stress. We just sweep things under the rug. We don't want to deal with our problems. And uh, we're not teaching this on any level. We're just taught. Yeah. We're just taught that. Me. We're just taught this is life, and this is what we have to do. When in all reality, which is kind of ironic, we have the ability to manipulate it. We have the ability to manipulate reality. But we just and, and there's science out there. It, that's all. It, see, like that sounds so much kind of more grand than it actually is, and it sounds almost like scary to start delving into that stuff. But really, that's been that's. That's, there's been a phrase forever, conceive it, believe it, achieve it. Mm -hmm. And that's what that is, really. Yeah, but we also have to understand that we have to overcome programming. Exactly. Years and years of conditioning to get out of that. Which is school. School. Your parents. Family. Yeah. Like, throwing their insecurities on you and 
making you feel like you have to do a certain thing, not saying that's my experience, but I just know that a lot of people go through that. A lot of people go through that. A lot of pressure. A lot of pressure from, yeah. pressure from teachers, from professors, the grade from system, the grade system, testing, certifications, all that stuff. Like, yeah, so we have to break that conditioning, but and that, and that takes a lot of time. That, that takes a lot of time, time. and that's what meditation has like brought me back to. to come, and I'm, dude, I'm lucky, man. I'm lucky because I've had, and I've said this multiple times, I'm very, very grateful for having parents that love the, love the shit out of me, right? Put me on a path where they saw that I had skills in, and like, Danny, you have to be, you have to go train, be a trainer. Why don't you be a trainer? Because this is good for you, blah, 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 blah. Like, my parents saw that in me, and they said, yeah, go do your thing, Danny, go do it. Danny, if that's what you love, go do it. Like, I was in a band for my entire life, from 13 to 19, creating songs, making music. My parents encouraged that. I wanted to play soccer in college and football in college. They encouraged that. Like. They never put all this crazy pressure on me that some parents do, like, you have three options, son. You're going to be a doctor, you're going to be a lawyer, or you're going to be somewhat in business. Yeah. Like, you're going to be somewhat in business. Like, like so. those are the three things that you have to do, and if you're not doing something along those lines, then you're not going to be successful. So here's, here's what I would ask you then, because we're, we're also blessed that we have a clear and strong idea of what we want to do. Yeah. But some people have no idea, mm -hmm. and they just thrust themselves into something that they think is acceptable. Well, well they have to do a lot of trial. Well, if somebody's on the, somebody has to be on the path for growth and evolving, you know, and just doing different things to try them is good. It doesn't have to be the end all be all. Like, if your parents want you to become a lawyer, and you don't necessarily want to become a lawyer, but you don't really know if you want to or not, go try it. If you don't like it, then it's not the end of the world. Stop it. Yeah. Like I went to DePaul University for six months. I I didn't know that I was gonna like it or hate it. I just thought that's what I had to do, so I went. But I was honest enough to say I don't fucking like this. This is stupid. This is not working for me. The investment doesn't doesn't like outweigh the reward here. Like there's nothing that I'm getting out of this. Well, I got the fact that I'll become aware of that, so it wasn't completely dumb. Like I just was honest to say like this isn't working. Yeah. Like no. And if you. If you try something and it doesn't work, that's not failing. It's just, that's actually just a lesson. But that's a shift in mindset that takes a lot of deconditioning. A lot of people might, might think, I'm a failure. If you waste six months, you quote unquote waste six months at school and you get quote unquote nothing out of it, you learn, that's, you got so much out of that. What about this? You're talking about wasting a year, wasting two years. What if you go down this path of four years of something you, that's, that's something that I kind of like, but I don't really like? But hold on. Here's the real, here's the real waste where it comes. Yeah. Now you're spending a whole life doing that work. Yeah. Now you're 55, 65. You may get your retirement that you've thinking like Social Security could, could be there, but it may not be there, right? So now you're 65 and you've done this life that you fucking really deep inside don't like but now you're 65 and you have no energy or physical will to do anything else yeah and then and you have not, that's, that's a real that's, that's a waste here's the point though it's not don't work at a desk job because there if if your passion is to be doing something like that for a big company and you feel like that's your skill set and you you enjoy that do that go to school for that if that's the path and we're not we're not saying be freelancers but just like, do what makes you happy, no matter what. And if that's being a hairstylist, or if that is being a lawyer, or an accountant on Wall Street. It goes back to love, and honesty, and truth, and yeah. gratitude, and appreciation. Yeah. That's why, I mean, we go back to that like heart-mind coherence, right? It has, to, it has to align with those things. If you're true to those things, and you, have, you express those feelings, and you practice those things, like, you'll start to listen to what your intuition is telling you. The more parasympathetic you become, the more balanced you become physically with exercise, with sleep, with nutrition, with meditation, the more relaxed and rested you become, as opposed to this survival mode that we're all in, you will listen to the things that your intuition is telling you. And that will guide you. That's why I'm so, so passionate about this path that I'm on, because I'm just listening to my, my inside telling me what to do. That combined with you, you took the path of what makes you giddy and gives you that yeah. rush. Like you were talking, we were talking about this the other day over coffee. Like people do, people party and they gamble and they do drugs and they do wild exhilarating they're, things. They're, they're seeking that, that, they're seeking uh, that rush. Yeah. But 
we get that just from doing what we yes makes us happy yes. naturally yes you know? yes and novelty bro novelty having a crazy dream an idea is good is good as long as you don't as long as you're not obsessing over this and making it a negative right just trusting that you're connected to it you're connected to it and eventually and the science is going to come out you can collapse time and you are essentially the vortex where those things will start to morph to you you're connected to all of it already you know like that information now you're getting like yeah, you're, you're kind of getting it. I'm getting wild. But, like, the information will come out, and it will be mainstream. They're making a documentary. Uh, Joe Dispenza is making that documentary. And the, in the trailer, he goes, consciousness is not related to your brain at all. There's we, no science that proves it. There is none. Yeah. There is none. Consciousness, what we, what we think is in our heads, is actually from somewhere else. Who knows where? Like, that still remains to be known, man. But, it's okay. Fuck the plan. So we're coming out some really good information right here. Okay. Okay. How long to follow it? Just follow it. Yeah. Keep going. Keep going. Again, like it all comes back to that that source, that loving source. Yeah. Which I think ultimately that's like love is consciousness, is truth, is everything that makes up the cosmos. Like that's, that's why you have to do what you love. That's, that's why, yeah. You have like to follow the love and just you know? listen, listen, listen to your, listen to it. Like you have to get out of your body to understand these things sometimes. But like you have to listen. You have to listen to what your intuition is telling you. You know, like I am interested in. I have these skills of of leadership and learning about wellness and having crazy novel ideas and dreams and goals but i just realized that day by day i was just doing what i love and it's just an infinite summer and each and every day that i work towards just living passionately and loving and, and building up the people around me that the life that you want the life that you are supposed to have will manifest whatever those dreams and ideas are man if, yeah if you just listen to that you know like it'll take you down that way it will yeah it'll, 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 when you because when you realize that failure is just a lesson and what and you follow what you intuitively feel towards what towards your passion nothing is ever really that bad you know it like you all you just get to the flow state that and now that and that's all but you also have to realize too like you and i are very very lucky individuals like yeah. The trauma that we've undergone is minuscule, right? Compared to what a lot of people are coming from. Everyone has a different starting point, yeah. and it's, it's never too late. Because if time is infinite, then it's never too late. But like, we we don't have it easy. But our trauma is just—it's just—I don't know. It's not as bad as a lot of other people. You know, like we both have loving parents. We both, yeah, we, we both, both have some though. Yeah, we've, we've definitely had, had, we've had our fair share. We've had our fair share. Yeah. No question, no question. We're not clean by any stretch. We've had trauma. Yeah. But like, there are people that really go through trauma. You know, like people come, people are coming from rape. People are coming from, people are coming from real abusive, drug-induced, gambling-affected households. Right, coming, coming from, from poverty, poverty. Yeah. coming from gun violence, yeah. coming from again drugs and abuse, physical abuse, verbal abuse, and all sorts of fucking trauma that you know, like I I didn't have to go through. You know, I didn't. I I went I, I went through some, nothing crazy violent. Like, but like there are people that that go through that, and like we have to be empathetic towards that, and. Again, we're all on the same team, no matter what color, religion, culture. We're all coming from the fucking world, you know. And so, that, yeah, that's that's it. Like we have to utilize our skills and passion, and joy, and like again, like you were talking about earlier, helping others, giving it to others. Like, what good is my success if other people can't read from it as well? Like, there's something powerful about that. And like, yeah, who wants to be quote unquote on top alone? You know, there are a lot 
lot of people. I just don't. I mean, but that's insecurity. That's yeah. Being on right. top and looking down at people feeds some part of your ego that's hurting. Yeah. That's, that can, which which stems from you can that sort of negative emotion if you have a damaged ego that you try, you want to fill and you don't realize that's not the way to heal it. Yeah. But anyways, thanks for coming on the shit and speaking facts with me and. Or at least speaking what we think are facts. Yeah, like, and just, we're just going through the motions. We're just going yeah, through the flow. It's, it's, it's all documentation. This will go in a documentary at some point. But, uh, dude, again, thanks for coming on. Many more to come. Facts. 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 Hell yeah. <laughs>